Hello everyone. This is a special presentation of theCUBE. We're here in London at AWS, one of AWS locations in London. My name is Dave Vellante, and theCUBE, we, we like to go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, and we've been following the, the ascendancy of AWS public sector from its early days. If you go back to 2013, there was a significant moment in the history of AWS where it won a CIA contract, a very large contract with the CIA. It was contested by IBM. IBM was used to kind of the, what, what, what sometimes called the old guard, the legacy companies, used to selling into the government big, big contracts, and here comes this startup, essentially AWS, taking away government business, the CIA, no less. Huge, huge contract. Well, IBM contested it. Judge Wheeler ruled against IBM for AWS, and when reading that ruling, it was clear that the AWS platform was superior to the IBM platform. He laid out the, the essentially the components of the RFP and you know, line by line and showed that AWS was the winner in virtually all of the line items. I think there was parity in one. The reason why that was so important was there were, there were several factors there. One, it was a major milestone event not only for AWS, but for cloud in general. If you think about security, uh, CIA, obviously very security conscious, it was the recognition that cloud actually could be more secure than on-premises infrastructure. So the government was actually one of the first to kind of realize that and lean into that. As a side effect, IBM had to go out and spend $2 billion on soft layer to actually compete in the cloud marketplace. So you had all these ripple effects. Fast forward today to 2019, you have the JEDI con contract, the Joint Enterprise Defense Initiative. It's a $10 billion contract. AWS is in the lead for that contract. Oracle, again, another old guard company, has contested. And when you look through, when, when a company contests these bids, a whole lot of public information comes out. What, what the information suggested was that a single cloud, the DOD determined that a single cloud was more secure less complex and more cost effective. And so Oracle contested the, the, the likelihood of an award to a single company because government contracts usually are awarded to multiple vendors. But in this case, because it's so critical to have the data in one place so that they can serve the field better and respond to the field better, the DOD decided to use a single cloud. So Oracle is you know, throwing all kinds of muck into the ring. Uh, basically asking the General Accountability Office to look at it, they did. G G GAO said, it's, it, we're going to go with the, the DOD's decision. The DOD itself did an internal investigation. Now it's narrowed down to two vendors, AWS and Microsoft, and we believe that AWS is the leading contender. Um, why is that? It's because AWS has the most services, it's the most advanced, the, the highest levels of security and, and uh, certifications within the government that are necessary to win these types of contracts. Why do I spend so much time on these things? There's two milestone events, the CIA contract in 2013 and what will soon to be the JEDI contract in 2019. And what we're seeing is Amazon Web Services, a $30 billion run rate company growing at 40 plus percent per annum. <clears throat> it's just a massive flywheel effect that we always talk about on theCUBE. So we're here in London because we wanted to see how the public sector activities of Amazon are translating into the European markets. So we're here at a special public sector mini summit, if you will. There's a healthcare pre-day going on. This is ahead of the AWS London summit. And we're, we're, we're siphoning off a number of the practitioners in, in, in startups, software companies, AWS partners in the healthcare industry, as well as AWS executives particularly focused on the public sector today. So we're doing this, sort of, we've followed the career of Teresa Carlson for a number of years, seen the ascendancy of AWS public sector. We've covered uh, a public sector summit in DC. We flew to Bahrain uh, last year. John Furrier, my business partner, uh, did the Bahrain summit. Bahrain was the first country in the Middle East to declare cloud first. So a, a critical location in the Middle East, and you're seeing it now Europe uh, across a number of industries. Obviously, NHS, the Nath National Health Service, is uh, very prominent in, in the UK and a, and a big consumer of services. All kinds of startups and other software companies trying to sell and help transform the NHS. NHS has 
a, a, a put forth a, a half a, a billion dollar, nearly a half a billion dollar pound initiative on modernization. A lot of that modernization is involving the cloud. So the cube is here, we're trying to peel back the onion, understand what's going on here, who are the winners, who's going to get affected, practitioners, uh, uh, startups, CEOs, nonprofit organizations, NGOs, executives from AWS and across the industry, so we'll be here. We have three events this week in, uh, in London, here today at AWS uh, headquarters in London. Uh, tonight we have an impact investor event and then tomorrow we're at the AWS su Summit in, uh, in, in London at the Excel Center, so keep it right here, watch this channel, check out uh, siliconangle.com for all the news, check out thecube.net, uh, which is where we host all these videos, and of course, uh, wikibon.org for all the research. So thank you for watching, and keep it right there, and you're watching theCUBE. This is Dave Vellante.